to you from Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Now, something momentous happened in Benin yesterday. Um, you must have been hearing about the Benin artifacts, which were, uh, should I say, um, stolen, or should I say just carted away in the last century. That is almost 180 years ago. And we have heard about some of them being in places as far away as Boston and museums in Chicago and museums in London. Well, the important news is that some of them are beginning to actually find their way back to where they were taken from. We're going to be looking at that this morning and our guests are His Royal Highness Prince Edun Akenzua who is the Enogye of Obazua. Good morning, yes. Prince. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much. And we also have with us Dr. Adrian Mark Walker. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Sunrise. You might be wondering why, what Dr. Walker has to do with all of this. Um, he is the grandson of the Colonel or Captain Walker yes. in whose... Well, he found something in his father's collection which he thought didn't belong there. Now, let me start with you, uh, Dr. Walker. Please tell us the story yourself. Um, my grandfather was a young captain when he, um, uh, first, when he came to Benin as part of the 1897 so-called punitive expedition um, following uh, the, the death of a party of British officers and um, uh, and carriers earlier, earlier in 1897. The punitive expedition, as most people will know, destroyed Benin uh, that year. And they, were, they found in the city very many um, bronzes and ivory artifacts. Um, most of those were um, taken by the Admiralty to defray the costs of the expedition and sold. That's how they found their way to museums all over the world, as, as you've pointed out. Some uh, were allowed to be kept by the officers, mm -hmm. and uh, it's those objects that I remember seeing in my grandmother's house uh, and being told they were from Benin. Um, thank you. Just go ahead. Go yes. Um, it, the... the um, <coughs> Uh, what really excited my interest, though, was a diary that my grandfather had kept, a contemporaneous diary describing every day of the action uh, from the, the time of his departure from Liverpool or by ship to his arrival back home again. Um, I was impressed by the, um, uh, the diary, and so I have, in addition to bringing the, the bronzes back, I brought the diary back because I think it would give historical context to, to um, uh, the, the temporary loss of when these you read the diary, <laughs> sorry to interject, when you read the diary, what did you find there? What kind of stories were being told? I was expecting to find um, evidence of the kind of casual racism that was widespread in, in England at that time. But I was very proud to find that my grandfather appeared to be ahead of his time. And this may have something to do with the fact that he was born and brought up in India um, ah. and living among um, a multicultural society already. Mm -hmm. um, so he had no difficulty in regarding the, his, the enemy as enemy in, in sense of human beings rather than enemy in any other sense. And he, he was also a man that clearly had respect for human life. He, he managed to save the lives of two people who were non-combatants who were about to be shot by Marines. Um, and he records all this in his diary. He also records um, uh, forcibly capturing um, a, a, a Benin villager, or at least a, a villager from the surrounding village, uh, in order to... Um, get him to show him the way when they were pursuing the Oba of uh, Benin and um, remarks that he found it great, very difficult 
to make the man understand that he was not going to be killed and not going to be sold into slavery, but simply returned to his home village when he'd completed the, the mission, Excellent. which was to show him the way. Okay. Now, what, what made you decide to, to return these things? They've, they've been away for 170 years or so. So why did you decide to uh, bring them back to Nigeria? Well, I'm as good a materialist as any other man, and I've certainly coveted those items uh, <laughs> since, um, uh, since becoming aware of the fact that eventually one of my parents' children would inherit them. And I have um, two brothers and two sisters, so there's a certain amount of competition going on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I suppose I might have kind of outflanked them by persuading my mother to part with them before she died. But I knew that um, I couldn't do anything with them at that stage because she would have been horrified at the thought of losing them from the family. When she did die last year, I should have been pleased to be the owner of these artifacts. But to my surprise, I found myself asking, well, although they'd be nice for me to have until I die, what then? My children, my grandchildren, to them they're just pieces of bronze. What better way of ensuring that they are properly looked after, I thought, than by returning them to, to their owners. Nigeria. Okay. Thank you. And now, Prince, um, the return of these precious pieces, um, when the news got to you that they were coming back, what were your thoughts? Well, I was elated. I was happy. I passed on the information to the over here, say these things were coming. And uh, of course, we've all been in pleading, using all the diplomatic uh, resources Tunnels. we had mm -hmm. to get this thing brought back. Not the two that have come now have come from the private owner, the private people, mm -hmm. as they do. Uh, the bulk of it all uh, we have in uh, uh, the museums, British Museum, the museum in Germany, America, mm -hmm. in Austria, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I must say at this point uh, that well, after, the, after the fight in 1897, that fight I was provoked by the British administrators here, uh, they didn't just tumble on those items, those precious items. Because in 1896, before the battle, Philip who was the uh, vice council of the British government at the time, Niger, Niger Coast Protectorate uh, in this area, that was where Philip was. He had written a letter to the home British Home Office telling them they had to come here and uh, depose the Oba then, my great-grandfather, that's Oba Vorabe, and that in order to make a case for the, uh, the permission we were looking for, he told them in that letter, a copy, uh, copy of which is available now, that he knew that there would be enough uh, ivory and bronze works in uh, the palace, the value of which would compensate for the, the cost of deposing the over. Now that's what they did. So after the battle, they deliberately looked for those things Philip referred to. And gleefully, they sat down on the public ground, cataloging them all, carrying them away. And luckily, from the diary, Adrian brought now, going through them. I saw his uh, grandfather's entry, uh, where they assembled all those uh, bronzes mm -hmm. and uh, ivory and so on. They wrote loot. Oh dear. That's what they wrote. At he the himself described it as loot. At that time, he described it as loot. And there was a second photograph of the same thing, and he simply wrote more loot. 
So That's he, incriminating, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, his grandfather knew exactly. Uh, mm. just looked. And mm. that's what happened. But we were quite excited mm. that a descendant of uh, uh, that Katya, he decided away at that time, without any prompting on his own, decided yeah. to bring those things back. Now, now Prince, uh, there have been discussions that we have heard of between Nigeria and those other countries, especially Britain, about the ones that are now in the British Museum. How far gone are those discussions and do we have any hope of those coming back? Because there seem to be quite a lot of them. Yeah, they, they, we have quite a lot there. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, or oh, it will surprise you to know that what they have in Britain uh, it's not as much as what they have elsewhere. They have quite a How place. so? It they, was the British that came here. They were the ones that came here. They took them all away, and I think when they got to Liverpool, they were trying to defray the cost of, of the oh. invasion, and they put them on auction. So people who were interested from wherever went there and bought them. So you have a lot of them in America, a lot in Austria, in Germany, in Germany, those places. Well, one of the things that quite a few Nigerians and especially those in diaspora keep saying is when this issue of the looted artifacts come up and they see what has been done to some of them uh, in the British Museum, how they've kept them and they keep cleaning them and making sure they're in sparkling, wonderful shape and form, they then ask the question, what are we doing with the ones back home? What are we doing with the artifacts we have in the King's Palace, whether it's here in Benin or in Ife or in Ibadan or other places? What are we doing with them? Well, I, I think I'll say this. When those things were created here, they were not created for the museum, for any museum. They were not artifacts. See, those things were our own diary as it were, because whenever anything happened, anything important happened in, a, in Benin, the Oba would tell the Guild of Bronze Casters to cast it into bronze. So as all the people were keeping diaries, the 